Hello and welcome back. Alright, so this project started out simple enough. My Xbox One controller that I use for PC gaming started getting the drift problem in the joystick modules that a lot of people have experienced. So I ordered some replacement modules and went ahead and replaced the old ones. Simple enough, right? Well, that's where things start to get uh, a little out of hand. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, after I replaced the modules, I realized that the joysticks themselves were quite a bit worse for wear after years of normal use. So, I wanted to 3D print something to fix them. And that's when I came up with these little grips that cap the old joysticks. I printed them out of TPU and they were a tight fit, so I thought they'd be great, only the added mass to the joysticks made it really uncomfortable for me to use. So, I went back to the drawing board. I found this joystick replacement on Thingiverse and printed them out in TPU as well, and I thought, problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. While these are good enough to use, they lack one important feature that I have grown accustomed to over the years of gaming, and that is this small little lipped ring that goes around the center of the top of the joystick. And while it might not seem like a big deal, if you're used to this feature and then it's suddenly not there, you're gonna notice it. I thought this would also apply to the gripped ring around the outside, but surprisingly I barely noticed it wasn't there. I think because my thumb is always more towards the center of the joystick than the edge anyway, but I'll probably end up printing out more with that grip later down the road just to test it out. Anyway, I digress. So after some iteration and a handful of wasted prints, I finally settled on one remix that I liked. And then I printed them out in TPU also, and that's when I started to notice something. I'm wasting all my TPU. Son of a bitch! So a couple years ago, I had ordered some PETG that I never ended up using. It was an off-the-cuff purchase and I never even opened the box. I think it might have been on sale and I just grabbed it while the price was low. Anyway, having never printed in PETG up to this point, I wasn't 100% sure what to expect printing it with my CR6SE. I already knew that a lot of people were having issues with PETG sticking to their build plates and effectively destroying them, and I didn't want to go through that. So after reading a bunch of ways of how to combat this issue, I opted to try the easiest, in my opinion, and reached for a roll of painter's tape. I didn't re-level the bed or anything like that, I just put a couple strips in the area where I knew the part would print, and that was it. No problems with it sticking, and my print bed is still intact after the fact. Poet and didn't know it. So this turned out well enough and as durable as ever in PETG, but it's kinda ugly with the clearly visible layer lines, so I wanted to do something about that. Firstly, I revisited my old smoothing prints trick where I used UV resin to smooth out PLA prints. And I tested it on the PETG, and it turned out pretty good in my opinion. All I did was double over some painter's tape to hold the part in place, and then used a Q-tip to rub the resin on. I also made this simple little UV curing station out of a cardboard box, tin foil, and foil tape, where I could leave the parts for about 10 minutes or so to cure. Once they came out of that, I washed them down with some generic rubbing alcohol, and here are the results. So after that test, I decided I wanted to try painting them before the resin. I only have two cans of spray paint here, so it wasn't hard choosing the colors. I am not by any means good at painting, and I didn't want it to be a solid color, so I may have got a little carried away. I waited about a half hour for the paint to dry, then coated them with resin and let them cure. And voila, they look and feel pretty good. So now I was done, now I can get back to gaming, right? Well, not exactly. I made a matching faceplate, only instead of using UV resin on this one, I actually used clear coat and it's PLA, not PETG. And for being an admitted novice at painting, I think it turned out pretty decent.
Now I could finally get back to gaming. Well, maybe after I print and paint this mask for fun anyway. Alright, I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever. Thank you.